Well, the immune system exists to defend and protect all of the other systems in the body. In order to do that job, it has to be incredibly complex. It's a very intricate system. And there are, uh, in the, within the immune system, there are cells that act like police, there are cells that act like the special forces, uh, there are cells that act like neighborhood watch, so there are all these different sorts of cells, and they all have to work together to accomplish this overall goal. So, we're going to break it down into two major uh, branches. The immune system consists of what we would call the innate defenses and the adaptive defenses. And these two different sets of responses have to work together in order to address different sorts of pathogens that we might encounter. So a lot of times pathogens that we encounter, they are microbes, things like bacteria and viruses, uh, but there are other sorts of, of things that we could encounter too, right? We could have things like parasites sometimes make their way into the body and our immune system has to be able to deal with all of these different things. So we're gonna start with the innate immune system. The innate responses are very non-specific. They are generalized responses. And if those don't do the trick, then the immune system goes on and it gets more specific. So um, next line of defense would be the adaptive immune responses. And this is where we can develop things like antibodies that are extremely specific to the pathogens that we're dealing with. So we'll start with the innate immune system. Innate immunity is all about um, sort of general mechanisms designed to keep pathogens out of tissues. Okay, so the goal is to keep them on the outside of the body, not let them inside. Um, and what are some of the ways that we do that? So what's your first line of defense against pathogens? You can think about that. You maybe have the answer in mind already. First line of defense is just going to be the barrier between us and the outside world around us. So our skin. Our skin is a really great first line of defense. Other examples of first lines of defense would include things like um, the, the acidic environment in your stomach. So when you eat food, right, we're eating food all of the time. We never sterilize our food. We shouldn't be sterilizing our food. Um, but since we're eating non-sterile stuff, um, our first sort of first encounter with that food is the digestive tract. And so our immune system has a very strong role right there, right from the get-go, um, just within the digestive tract. There are things in place in order to prevent pathogens from making it inside into the body. So um, other examples of innate immunity. So the skin for sure, the skin is a good first line of defense as long as there are no breaks in the skin. It does a good job of keeping the things out. Um, we've also got mucus, right? Mucus lining membranes. That mucus does a good job of trapping a lot of pathogens. Um, some of them might happen to get by, but at least mucus is stopping a lot of things from getting in. We've mentioned the stomach, um, the acidity in the stomach. Remember the pH in the stomach, it's very low. It's a very acidic environment. pH is only like one to two. Um, so that does a good job of killing a lot of pathogens. Still, it might be that some make it past the acidic environment of the stomach. They might make it down into the intestinal tracts. And so we have, um, we have immune cells that just kind of hang out in the intestinal tracts. And that's the next line of defense. Um, so we've got this whole sort of system in place, lots of redundancies, lots of backups in terms of being able to deal with these pathogens. Let's say something does um, make it internally, make it into our bodies, into our tissues. Okay, then we have immune cells that go around and just kind of survey and look for cells that appear to be foreign. We'll talk about that in just a second. How do they do that? Um, but if they find cells that look foreign, they engulf them. Okay, so engulfing pathogens is one possibility. And then um, finally, it, let's again consider if we do have a pathogen that, that manages to make it past all these lines of defense, it manages to take up residence in our tissues, um, our bodies can do things like develop a fever. A fever is another example of an innate immune response. It's not a specific response, it's a generalized response. Okay, so regardless of what the pathogen is, fever is one of these generalized responses that our bodies might exhibit and that helps to inhibit um, the pathogen from doing what it's trying to do. So anyway, all of those are good examples of innate immunity. There are some specific examples here listed out on the slide, um, specific to particular structures, just going into a little bit more detail. Um, but I think we've got the, the general idea. Innate immunity is like the first line of defense against pathogens. Um, okay, so some of these 
some of these abilities of innate immunity, some of them are just like always active, right? You always have skin on the surface of your body. You always have an acidic environment in your stomach. Um, but others of these are activated specifically in response to the presence of a pathogen. So let's take a look at that a little bit more. How do these, um, th these innate responses sort of kick in if a pathogen is present? And this is gonna bring us to a consideration of how do we recognize pathogens? So our, cell, our bodies are made up of cells and um, these pathogens are also in many cases made up of cells. So how do we tell the difference? How does our immune system recognize the difference between our cells and cells that are not supposed to be there? So uh, remember back to the cell surface. When we talked about the cell surface, we talked about how there are a lot of proteins and glycoproteins embedded in the plasma membrane. And it turns out a lot of those molecules can be used as sort of recognition points. So our immune cells, they are able to come up um, and recognize what are the molecules that are on the surface of this cell. If we have a cell in our bodies that is foreign, it's a cell that's not supposed to be there, um, the molecules are going to look different. They will have a different molecular pattern. And in the case of pathogens, we call these pathogen associated molecular patterns. Okay, so PAMPs for short, P-A-M-P. Um, so PAMPs are things that our immune cells can recognize just because they look different from our own cells. The way that they're able to recognize PAMPs is by using a receptor. So our immune cells have special receptors on their surfaces. They're called toll-like receptors. Um, and what the toll-like receptors do is recognize the PAMPs. Okay, so when the receptors are bound, when the toll-like receptors on the immune cells, when they are bound, that can activate a cascade of events inside of the immune cell, and that leads to the secretion of chemokines. Um, chemokines are a type of cytokine. Remember, cytokines are just messenger molecules. Chemokines are a subset of cytokines. What chemokines do is uh, they're chemicals, so chemo, they're chemicals that can attract other cells. So they can initiate chemotaxis, initiate other cells to move to that region of the body. So chemokines get released and that can either recruit or activate other types of immune cells. So this is, um, this is initiating a whole series of events internally. We'll be getting into these things a little bit more detail right now. The goal is just to get the general idea out there. Sometimes um, pathogens, like some bacteria, sometimes they produce molecules just kind of as a byproduct of their own metabolism that's going on. And those molecules that the pathogen produces, sometimes those can be recognized by the immune system and sort of picked up like, like a trail. So if you have a bacteria that's moving along through the body and it's leaving this trail of molecules in its wake, um, then the immune cells can follow that trail in order to hunt down the bacteria. And they do a really good job of that. Coming back just one more time with the PAMPs and the toll-like receptors, sometimes a, a, it's a really good analogy. Sometimes an analogy that helps people is sort of grasping this. Um, so PAMP, this is talking about the molecular, like the surface of the pathogen. Um, a really good analogy is thinking of, of this in terms of a uniform. Okay, so if you have, um, if you have a, an army and all the soldiers are wearing the same uniform, they can rec recognize each other based on that fact. Um, Right? But if there's somebody else, if there's another soldier that comes in and they're wearing a different uniform, well, that's kind of like the first trigger. Oh, this is, this is a foreign soldier. This is one that doesn't belong to us. This might be one that we need to, to address in some way. Um, so the PAMPs are sort of acting like the uniform. Each cell has its own uniform and the immune system, first thing it does is just look at that uniform. So let's go on um, and check out what happens next. So once this recognition takes place, what are some things that happen next internally? And we're still just talking about innate immunity. So these are non-specific responses, they're generalized responses. Um, so innate immunity. Okay, so after recognition takes place, there are really four key things. And we're gonna be going into, into each of these in a little bit of detail. We're gonna start with phagocytosis and then um, fever, the interferon response and inflammation. All of these are examples of innate responses that can take place. So in the next video, we're gonna pick up with phagocytosis.